Welcome back, everyone, to more exhibition match replays. This time, we are in 1v1. Now, I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury 33, whichever you prefer. And we have Reposter against Steel Blue. Steel Blue with Rovers and Reposter also with Rovers. Which is kind of nice because I haven't seen a lot of Rovers in recent 1v1s. And we're on Krubic Plains, a map which I haven't seen in a long time and is very flat. It is very flat. Like, it, it's not entirely clear at first, but no, it is. Yeah, that, that's not an illusion, optical illusion or anything. It is just completely flat. That is how the map works. So, we're going to be starting... Actually, that's a lot bigger than it looks. Anyway. With that, we should be seeing some economic starts coming out here. I mean, Reposter. Both Reposter and Steel Blue going pretty quick on that. Steel Blue relying more on the energy reclaim. Is this... Okay, that was probably missing both there on the Mason. Not ideal, but it should be fine. Oh, unless they were trying to make sure that there weren't any scouts or anything going around the back. It's the only thing I could think of that looked like it was just a misinput on the Mason. Anyway. Again, it should be a bit of a slower start just because of the fact that it is a larger map. Though, considering the way it is built out, I kind of... I'm trying to think what to even expect off this, because... Basically, this is free. It, a lot of the stuff is free for each side. We're going to be seeing mostly just fights along the corners more, more than likely. I mean, the center of the map is desolate for as far as any strategic... Any kind of strategic locations go. It pretty much... It's relevant because that's where your units move through, but otherwise, it doesn't really do much for you. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a pretty quick gunship or plane switch. Just because of how large the map is and how much things rely on the edges. But moving to the edges is kind of hard to do. Especially with rovers. So with that, I mean, this poster does seem to have control over the center a bit more. I mean, for what it's worth, it is kind of hard for these units to get anywhere where they need to be besides just the center of the map vaguely. So, Steel Blue trying to find some way of kind of pushing back so you can find anything to attack, but not a whole lot is going to really present itself. Steel Blue, however, is managing to get these side expansions first and look to be looking to defend them as Reposter decides just to explore around to see whether or not stuff has been built. And they will indeed find that there has been a bit more construction over the West than they might have expected and then they themselves certainly have done. But thanks to Steel Blue Scorchers, they are pushed away. So that'll protect the Western Expansion. Steel Blue able to expand that little bit faster. Same time, Reposter's Commander just jumping through, using that to get around to the sides. Same with Steel Blues, actually. I mean, Recon Comms are really strong on basically any map with cliffs for that exact reason. Especially really sparse maps with cliffs. They do help quite a bit. Reposter now finally catching up a little bit when it comes to their own expansion, but... Steel Blue being ahead of them, and not ahead that much. It's really going to come down to what happens in the first few fights. Possibly what happens if there's any raiding going on. Steel Blue looks like they have an eye to try to take out this eastern expansion, or at least check if something's there. But it's more of a question of whether or not they're able to even get close, but with that Ripper, it looks promising. I mean, one Ripper isn't enough to wipe out a bunch of Scorchers, but it does soften them up enough for the remaining Scorchers to... Or for... Rather, for Steel Blue's remaining Scorchers to get rid of the rest. A Reposter, what do they have up their sleeve now? They are... Themselves? Throwing in Rippers. Realizing that is a thing they have to deal with. Does Reposter know what's going on here? Oops. No, they don't quite yet know that there's something here. They will soon, though. Mason able to run away, avoid getting itself killed for now, at least. It can only run so far. Same time, Scorch is going over to Steel Blue's commander. Ripper might be the only thing that helps Steel Blue survive this. 
Steal loot. Jump. 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 Your commander needs to jump. The, co uh, the commander didn't jump. Oh, finally the commander jumped, but that's still too late. It needed to have jumped a long time ago. That is a huge blow. Oh, I mean, that Ripper... If if the commander had jumped way earlier, the Ripper would... That, that would have been worth it. The Ripper would have been able to soften up the units enough for it to make it actually make sense. But now... Now Steel Blue kind of fallen behind, lost quite a bit of energy. Didn't lose too much metal. They weren't accessing particularly, but still... That is a huge blow. Their north expansion is going to be far slower to build up. And their western expansion being taken out as well. The Mason goes down. So Steel Blue's early expansion attempts have been rewarded with utter destruction. Lost their commander. Lost their expanding Mason. Losing the metal extractors over to the western side of the map. Some revenge attacks coming in over into the main base of her poster. So at least it's not going down without a fight. But Steel Blue, they are still struggling here. I mean, they can't really push too far. This is Reposter's home, and they do already have Rippers. Not to mention their commander, well protected by three Lotuses. So now Reposter's just got free reign over at least the economy. Not quite free reign over the map. And, ooh, the defensors coming in here over to the south side of the map, looking to get rid of Reposter's little defense forest. Now that is going to be an interesting approach. I mean, if that they get rid of the defense force, Steel Blue's command or sorry, not Steel Blue, Reposer's commander could still jump into the water. Which, again, I'm surprised Steel Blues didn't I, Oh, maybe that's what it was. They were trying to jump into the water. But no, jumping at all would have been fine, because it would have gotten them away from the scorchers far enough they could have just they could have still attacked the scorchers without getting hit. Or at least without getting hit as hard. Yes, they couldn't have escaped into the water. But I'm pretty sure they had enough damage that they would have been able to kill off the Scorches before they themselves died. So long as they got away from the Scorches and didn't take the extra damage from being close. At any rate, the Fencer is able to come in and able to do a number on Reposter's defenses. Reposter trying to come in with their own Scorchers. But it looks like their commander just has to get out of there. It's the only real way through this. And your poster's commander isn't going to be too heavily threatened by the fencers. I mean, it's not a, a high damage, high damage unit. No, to be fair, it's not nothing. Poster's commander decided to go in and attack directly. Shotgun is a pretty useful tool in this context, though the Ripper might make them regret having tried. And that jump was wasted. Ripper takes it out. Poster loses their commander too, and Steel Blue is able to get revenge, getting rid of their commander, and not quite opening up the southern expansion, but still at least doing quite a bit of damage to it. Same time the northern expansion is being retaken by Steel Blue. The eastern base Repressor still has, but their main advantage has been overdrive. Largely thanks to all the wind generators they made at their own base, which to be fair, is not unlike what Steel Blue is doing. Oh! Is that because Steel Blue... Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, no, it doesn't. No. You don't need to be full storage in order for the energy to be going into overdrive. It goes into overdrive anyway. Yeah, we can see already here. It's not like it stops overdrive. At any rate, with that, the... Well, Reposter's expansion having been wiped out, that is still their advantage economically. Steel Blue is still struggling to find any real footing to actually get a real counterattack. I mean, they've gotten rid of the Mason now. They're sort of able to defend the center, but that's proving harder than it looks, considering the army is somewhat split. I mean, Reposter's army... Yeah, it's just well-positioned enough to deal with this. Getting rid of... Okay, one Ripper down, the second Ripper will soon follow. They are providing a nice distraction, however, for Steel Blue's fencers to do their job. But now, with Rippers coming in from Reposter, and along the side, too, making it that much harder for the fencer to deal with them. The Scorchers coming in on top of that, and that is Steel Blue's army completely wiped out. Or, rather, the western... The western flank of the army completely wiped out. The eastern flank has not pulled back to reinforce, so with that... Steel Blue's main base is very vulnerable. Not sure if they're going to try to go for a counterattack against Reposter, which... I don't know if I would really advise that. I mean, Steel Blue, having managed to largely rebuild, is 
getting closer to being on par with Riposter in terms of overall economic value. Now it's just a matter of whether or not or how Riposter is able to work with this. It's looking honestly a little dire for Steel Blue. I mean, that Mason's not looking long for this world here. Send the one over by the shore. So with that, Steel Blue's kind of mainly lost it because they had stuck so much off of the side. I mean, this this assault was fine. It's just they haven't pulled their units back. It's like they've forgotten about them completely. Still, Riposter are unable to com to wipe out all of Steel Blue's base. But again, that damage was still done. Steel Blue's expansion being rebuilt, though, and it is well enough defended. Ripper cannot push through and deal with it. I'm still surprised. Why are all these units over here? Like, why does Steel Blue forget this? Steel Blue's in chat right now. Why did you forget this? Well, they remembered now. But it's like, it's right here. The forces were all here the whole time. The army at Valley was actually pretty even. It was just a matter of positioning. And on this map, that's pretty important considering the size. It's a large enough map that you can't easily reposition. Actually, for that matter, what radar is available? Not much in either way. Yeah, neither side really is going all that radar focused. We didn't have the radar being built up by Steel Blue briefly, and Reposter is well going for the advanced radar. Should have a bit more success setting that up since they aren't being directly assault assaulted right now. Oh, Steel Blue is saying in chat they wanted to keep the mechs denied, which is understandable, but at the same time the entire army was lost in the process, so I think it's more a question of maybe have radar? Or the thing that the Sparrow the radar turns into? On a map like this, that, that information is so necessary because of how much the positioning matters, but also how much you have to be prepared. You have to move your units well in advance, and that means you gotta know where your units, or where your opponent's units are. And radar is nice for that, but scouting is even better. Well, to be fair, now with the advanced radar, Reposter basically has the entire map known to them. So there aren't a whole lot of ways Steel Blue can surprise them anymore. And that's why Steel Blue was trying to go for one of those themselves. They just man didn't manage to get it up and haven't actually built any since. Yeah, that's how it works in a map like this. You need that advanced radar. Or sparrows. Or both. Steel Blue going for a two-pronged attack. Expansion over the southwest is dead. The expansion over, or the main base, however is well enough defended, it won't be a problem, and the southwest expansion is actually not being attacked directly, considering that this army is right here, nor is there a counterattack, considering the army has been split up, though I think Reposter shouldn't go for that because of the possibility of a flank. What? Oh. So with that, Reposter will be able to take back the Mexes over to the eastern side of the map, Though Steel Blue has been expanding reasonably well despite that, Reposter's Overdrive and Reclaim both have been, again, providing them with an economic advantage, which, considering that the attrition is basically on par, it's pretty even. Although that is saying something, because I was pointing out that Steel Blue lost a lot thanks to early attack or earlier split of their army, which, I mean, actually hasn't worked out too badly for them, all things considered. It looked bad, but they've managed to re-expand around that and really make it work. I mean, the pressure they applied... I mean, the pressure they applied to this base, particularly just having the Mason along with their army, allowing them to rapidly build up that expansion. Mason over to the side, rapidly building the expansion, and getting a nice little wall here. That is clever. I think this is... Yeah, so I thought. Vehicle impassable. Vehicles cannot cross this. They'd have to go to bots. So, yeah, building this wall here is perfect. Just If the vehicles can't pass through here, then this expansion cannot be assaulted except by air or by bot. And speaking of air, there's the gunship I was looking for. I was musing earlier about the possibility of a gunship switch, and there it is. Similarly, gunships have been built up by Steel Blue. We already see a few tridents being built up. So for now, it looks like we are going to be seeing... Nimbus is coming in to help get rid of this expansion right after the wall is constructed, too. Just after that. 
Oh, I see. The steel people pointing out there actually was a sparrow that scouted the gunship plant. Okay, my bad. That is fair. If you did that, then that was good. That's that is the correct thing to have done. Anyway, we're supposed to be able to get rid of the Mexes over to the north east. Able to get rid of the Mexes over to the north too. This this is not really much of a defense force coming in. And tridents are up. I mean, this is clearly you know scouted the gunship plant. Went for tridents. Unfortunately, they do not help get rid of the ground forces. And while the Ravager is doing his level best, it is going to fall pretty soon. And once that Stardust goes down, everything else can just rush in and kill kill off the rest of the metal extractors. Still, still, Blue is not doing too badly, all things considered. I'm actually kind of surprised when they... Their overdrive is really not there. And they just need more energy, really. That, that would be the key thing. Like, that's the reason we're poster has the overdrive. But they just have so many more wind generators. And as a result, so much more raw energy. So they're... More of it can go into overdrive. Whereas Steel Blue is using most of their energy as they go, which means they can't really overdrive that much. And that's the key part of Reposter's advantage right now, is the overdrive. And Steel Blue in chat pointing out they had abysmal energy management. That's, yeah, I mean, as long as you recognize it, you know, just... Baron, it's, it's a hard part of it. That's one of the hardest parts of this game, honestly, is getting the energy management right. Though, are they planning on... Oh, I see. They're planning on putting radar up there. That makes sense. Although, I mean, wind generators up there would be quite nice. I think they'd be... I think they would work okay. What's the wind generator here? 7 or 2. Point, or 0.7 or 2.5. Alright. That is not bad. Although I think it's roughly similar. Oh no, 0.3 or 2.5 on the ground. Yeah, okay. 0.7 or 2.5 would be nice up there. But it looks like that's going to just be for the radar. Still able to get up there. Able to do that job. If Steel Blue is able to hold off the center for, the long, for as long as they need to, they should be fine. Tridents are coming in, making the Nimbuses unable to do much. Well, Force Retreat or to die, and looks like the Nimbuses are choosing death. Not entirely sure why, but they have chosen death. Well, that's how that goes. Still on the ground, Reposter does have the advantage. Not to mention just the sheer amount of energy infrastructure they've been building up. And also the Geo plant, because why not? Geo is unavailable for Steel Blue, unfortunately. And again, they don't seem to be getting a whole lot more energy than they have, which... Yeah, that, that overdrive, that, I just am surprised, but that's how overdrive is sometimes. I'm a little surprised for poster isn't setting up pylons between here and either the mexes down here or back to their main ones. Ooh. Though, Trident's coming into the main base, locking down the gunship plant, so... Steel Blue at this point only has to worry about ground forces, but that's a lot to worry about. Steel Blue, they don't really have the army to contest this. I mean, that's... That's 3,900 metal worth of tridents. So, unable to really stop... anything. I mean, actually, no, more than that. 2,600 metal worth of tridents. That's a lot of metal. Like, that... No, that's the entire ground army for Reposter right now is in tridents for Steel Blue. Which isn't doing them any favors, considering that they are still running a massive deficit army value-wise. They are... Not going to be able to take out the Nimbuses if all the Tridents go down, and they're not going to be able to take out the ground forces at all. I mean, dropping in several Rippers to try to get rid of the Scorchers, and that's a good plan. But that's not just Scorchers they're fighting. So with that, the Tridents... Most of the Tridents go down. Five Tridents remain going around the side to try to regroup with the rest of the army. Or at least patrol the sides, but that's... I don't know if it's going to be enough for Poster continuing to push in with all the Nimbuses on top of everything else. This is not looking good for Steel Blue. Still Blue losing this Western Expansions, getting utterly wiped out there, and their main base is hanging on by a thread. Honestly, Reposter could advance any time and they'd be able to wipe everything out. I think they don't know this. Although they, they should know this. I mean, Reposter has radar coverage basically in the 
all the way through the base. So they should know there is nothing that's going to kill them. Like, they could push in right now. Like, Steel Blue desperately trying to hold on to this, and that is that. So, the only thing left is Chainsaw over the north, the southwest trying to protect this expansion as best they can, but, again, that's not going to help when there's no air units attacking it. I mean, Dominatrix is here. Oh, yeah, silly, that wasn't... They didn't bring the Mason, they captured the Mason. Doi. That's all they did, they just captured the southern expansion. I mean, clever... Clever approach, actually. Clever use of Masons to try to turn things around, but at this point, that's also the only thing Steel Blue really has outside of their main base, so... Clever, but fragile. Still, it did work. And with that, it looks like it's soon time for this to fall apart. Steel Blue with a bunch of Rippers. They're not doing a bad job against the Ravagers. I mean, obviously, the Scorchers can't do anything to help, but... I'm not surprised that Riposter... I, mean, I think Riposter just is not paying attention to this front line. They're cleaning the back line, trying to make sure that their metal extractors are safe, setting up reinforcements, getting a few more Nimbuses up, along with some Tridents, just in case for anti-air of their own. But the contain seems pretty final now. Tridents are also unable to move too far around the map, thanks to the fencers. So for now, it's looking dire. More Scorchers coming in. The Rippers, however, for Steel Blue, still here. They still will be causing problems for Scorchers. Fencers are the main tool that Reposer will have to break through this, and the Nimbuses. I mean, really, the Nimbuses are the biggest asset they've got from going for them. Steel Blue has their own Tridents, but at this point, Reposter, they've got Crashers, they've got Tridents of their own. Scorcher can take out anything that's being a bit too careless. Steel Blue going for the attack. So somewhat saved by the sheer amount of, of corpses on the battlefield. So many wrecks. So little reclaim. Dropping a caretaker, so at the very least taking it that way. But yeah, the sheer number of wrecks just getting in the way of projectiles. That's one thing when you're dealing with a battlefield like this, is that eventually it just becomes hard to hit things. And more wrecks being added to the wall of wrecks. Still not going to do too much, though. Caretaker being dropped into the water. Good plan, keeps it safe. Though it's hard to tell how effective that'll be with the badgers, but... Still, once the caretaker gets up, Reposter will... I mean, they already have the economic advantage. They already have a two-fold economic advantage over Steel Blue, but that's just going to secure it. I mean, this is Steel Blue's last chance is to reclaim this field. And they're trying. They really are trying. But they aren't... I don't know how well they're going to be able to do it. I mean... That's... About 3,000 metal reclaim there. They might be able to get a few hundred before they're forced to retreat. And the character coming in their side. At the same time, the Dominatrixes have gone down. Pulling the Mason back, pulling the Mexes back, Reposter denying Steel Blue their only expansion. And that looks to likely be it. Steel Blue going for will probably be their final attack, trying to break out of this contain. And it's proving not entirely ineffective. Ravager's doing a fair bit of damage to the fencers, but just not really enough to break through this as the remaining fencers come in, recoalesce into a line. And we're able to continue to provide support to stop the rest of this bush. Rippers coming in, trying their best, but getting wiped out by Lotuses, getting torn up by the opposing fencers. The Rippers for Riposter, not doing as much work, but still softening things up. The fencers able to finish it off. And with that, Steel Blue loses their entire army. Riposter should be able to go in for a counter push. Oh yeah, can't deny the Badgers. Their credit. And stopping a bunch of stuff there, too. Steel Blue going, to, looking to go for the Caretaker. Should be able to take it out. Slow down, slowing down the reclaim from Reposter. But that's not the only Caretaker that was there. And the second Caretaker, still very much alive. And very useful for repair. 
Badger should be able to take that out, however. And indeed they do. Still, Reposter's kind of playing with their food. Building up a few more Nimbuses. Building up a Strider Hub. Not sure what they're planning on doing with that. Because again, they could push from here. The main difficulty for them is that they haven't really been pushing, and so they've been letting Steel Blue build up small, like, little army, armies, little squads coming in, able to start to damage the lines, push Reposter back. But Reposter, I mean, they have more Nimbuses coming in. The Nimbuses are already here, just... They were taking care of the Southwest. That's the thing to bear in mind, too. This is a third of Reposter's army defending, and Steel Blue realizing this throws in the towel. Realizing, no, their army value, their army is tiny compared to Reposter's. And, yeah, if you look at the army value difference, 13.1 to 3,000. It yeah, Like I said, a third of the army is defending here fully from Steel Blue's assaults. The rest is just stood around the map making sure nothing can be raided. I mean, that's what happens when you have such an overwhelming economic and army advantage. You just, you get to split your forces like that. I mean, overall, that was like, Reposter kind of just taking it from beginning to end. Steel Blue in the middle had a bit of an army value advantage once they got back their expansion over to the north and south and briefly did have a massive income advantage. Well, massive static income advantage when it came to setting all their metal extractors up, but Reposter never really lost the actual income advantage thanks to the overdrive. They always stayed ahead because the overdrive off of these wind generators was enough that even losing all of the metal extractors across the map, they still had an economic parity. They were still able to keep up. On top of the reclaim. So from there, Reposter was just able to push, eventually getting... Okay, they were just flexing at that point. Getting <laughs> Paladin was the plan. But yeah, that's that was the idea. That was the whole thing. So that is going to be it for me today. Thank you all for watching. And hope you enjoyed that. Be back again next week. I'm also doing. Uh, if people haven't noticed, I there's another uh, Saturdays used to be zero k time, but I have been commentating tournament for a, an upcoming game called Immortal Gates of Fire. It's kind of a a bit more Starcraft-ish like than zero k. More like, I mean, it it's. In the same vein, it's a game that iterates on and tries to improve the quality of life and general accessibility of RTS, but in, where Zero K does that starting from a Total Annihilation base point, Immortal does it from a StarCraft base point. But I think it works really well. Anyway, so I've been casting tournaments for that on Saturdays, so if you want to watch that, yeah, Saturdays is the usual time. Otherwise, Zero K is going to be on Sundays going forward. So that's going to be it. So yeah, Immortal Gates of Pyre. It's still in pre-alpha. It's very raw, but it's fun. It's fun to play. It's fun to watch. So yeah, check that out. I'm not going to put it on YouTube until the all the kinks get sorted out. So if you're watching on YouTube, this is just on Twitch for now. Anyhow, thank you all again for watching and have a good night, everyone.